Hey everybody, welcome to Let's Look at Fucking Super Hexagon. Oh my god, I, we should get this out of the way before we get started. Inevitably, this is an incredibly short and difficult game. It's not short in the sense that you think like, oh, the campaign's only like 45 milliseconds long. No, it's short in the sense that I'm gonna die repeatedly. It's quite possible that you're gonna see just a torrent of like three second runs here. But in any case, that's gonna annoy some people and I apologize for that, but there's no getting around it. Super Hexagon is a like bite-sized puzzle game that will frustrate you and frustrate you in good ways. It's also, I mean, that's the one side of the coin is that it's frustrating uh, and very like fast paced. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but the other side is that it's super addictive, incredibly replayable and oddly rewarding uh, in that, you know, one in 100 chance that you actually have a fantastic run. And by the way, I should mention, this is actually the newest game from the creator of VVVVVV, Terry Cavanaugh. So he also did, you know, Don't Look Back. Uh, VVVVVV is obviously probably his most uh, known game by this point. But this is a totally, like, swift or strict departure from a puzzle platformer. This is just a straight up, like, puzzle kind of racing game almost. The best way to explain it is basically just to get started. And I apologize if my commentary becomes a little scant. Once we actually get involved here, you might just hear muffled grunts and groans. But anyway, we're going to get started. Uh, I've only got three levels unlocked right now. I've only played about 20 minutes of this. But believe me, this is enough to definitely get uh, a feel for how the game works. And notice that the difficulty on the first level, hard, harder, hardest. And then all these levels that I have not even unlocked yet. So we're going to get started here. Basically, I'm playing as this triangle right here. And by using left and right on the D-pad... Oh, there we go. That was actually longer than my average run. Um... By using left and right on the analog, well not analog stick, on the uh, arrow keys here on my computer, I am capable of rotating this arrow around. And obviously my only goal is to actually fit this out, uh, or get this arrow as far out of the situation as I possibly can. A minute to eight seconds there, my best is 13. Uh, I wonder if I could possibly, actually that's not even my best, I'm pretty sure that is my girlfriend's best. She got super competitive about this game once I set a score over 10 seconds and played for like two hours. And that's what I should maybe do things almost in reverse order for this Let's Look At because this is su such a, a weird one, sort of. Uh, and talk about my impressions of the game at the start. Because my impressions of this game are- oh, that was so close. My impressions of this game are, are very, very positive. This is a solid uh, puzzle game. It, it's also potentially something that will give you a, like incredible motion sickness or epilepsy, but that's kind of the point. And actually, now that I play it and, and think about how this fits in uh, to the canon of a game like VVV, you can sort of see similarities in the same, in the form of like the, the aesthetics. Like they both have that same kind of like colorful, simple uh, graphical style that that is, uh, you know, endemic to both of those games. Uh, but anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. Overall, Fine. Super Hexagon is an incredibly addictive, Excellent. substantially difficult uh, puzzle game. That's the best score that I've ever gotten there. Notice there, by the way, that I got to level 2. That just means, uh, I think, like, every 10 seconds, the level kind of changes scope a little bit, uh, and you reach, like, a new plateau for scoring. Now, the levels are not randomly generated, at least not in this mode. I know that there is a hyper mode that comes in later in the game, but the odds of me seeing that anytime soon are substantially low. Uh, so the levels are... completely known. Or, or repeatable, I should say. So you can memorize them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Did I beat the... Uh, what the heck? This is the best I've ever done by far. Sometimes you just get in the zone. What can I say? Okay. Keep it up. Ah, oh, we died. But that was 31 seconds. That's crazy. I've never uh, gotten that far. Although I have seen uh, Rock Lee Smile, my, my buddy Nick. You can check him out. YouTube.com slash Rock Lee Smile. Uh, he jumped the gun on this one. Definitely beat me on the... Uh, you know, turnaround time for Super Hexagon here. Uh, and he's got some runs up on his channel where he played for like a minute straight and it just blows my fucking mind. Anyway, let's uh, exit and go to stage select here. So that's by far the best I've ever done there. I guess I just reached a breakthrough. We're gonna go to Hexagoner now. I haven't really played this one too much. As you can probably tell right here. And you might be thinking, Northern Lion, maybe you just kind of suck at this game. You might be right. In fact, you are right because I haven't played very, very much of this at all. But I would like to point out as well uh, that it's definitely not as easy as it looks when you're in the moment and you've got all these flashing lights and the spinning going on. Although, I'm amazed that this is somehow, for like one of the hardest games I've played recently in my life, it, it's apparently easier, or it's bucking the trend. Normally when I play puzzle games, it's like, I do substantially worse when I'm on camera. Now, I appear to be actually be doing a little bit better, believe it or not. 
All right, so we made it out of there somehow. I didn't expect for that to happen. I don't know how I did that like without even thinking about it the first time. Oh, that was awful. Come on, keep it up here. It, the hardest part here is this part right. Maybe the levels are randomly generated. It's, it's imp I, you might be, you're probably a better person to ask, random viewer, about whether these levels are, are procedurally generated or they're picked from like a, a set of levels or something like that. Uh, because in the moment, man, all I see is triangles and lines. And I'm just trying to make it work as best as I can to survive in the world today. Alright, we made it to triangle there, which is actually pretty solid. Let's try this again. I cannot stress enough that although this game is incredibly simple, I was going to say looks incredibly simple, but let's be honest, it is incredibly simple. Uh, it is also fantastically addictive, like, the, the one more try element of this game, you might think it's high in a game like Super Meat Boy, in Super Hexagon, uh, it is off the goddamn charts. I'm not saying this is a better game uh, than Super Meat Boy by any stretch of the imagination, don't... See, like, this, the start of this level felt different. Um, yeah, don't, don't take me as being a crazy person or anything like that, uh... Super Meat Boy is certainly a more, like, fully realized and probably replayable package than this, but the the fact that each run in this game is only, like, five seconds long sometimes, uh, or less in that case, actually makes the, the replayability sub quite substantial. It's uh, hard to get used to the controls at first, too, because you can kind of, like, skirt against the walls a little bit. That was not very good at all. Um, but also, the triangle moves way faster than you would probably expect it to at first. Like, just a quick tap is enough to send you, like, halfway across uh, a particular segment. See, I like this one. It makes it possible for me to get out of there a little bit more easily. It might be another, like, maybe if you choose, like, X path, you get uh, a different layout either. I, but that seems crazy to me. I don't know, I'm just talking out of my ass with respect to level generation here. So, ignore me. We're gonna escape. Still, oh! Things close in on you very quickly here. It's almost impossible for me to describe the perspective of this game, too. Like, what is it? Are we just staying in the center and, like, these hexagons are coming down at us? Or are we doing some kind of race against the singularity of a black hole? I have no fucking idea. Let's just keep this up. All I know is that every day, all day, I just want a super hexagon. This game originally started on, on mobile devices, uh, which seems like a, a, a great fit. Because, you know, it's got this bite-sized gameplay that you can quite easily play where you're waiting for a bus, although... You know, I would probably miss my stop because I would be too engrossed or, you know, my brain would just be so spaced out after playing this for a few minutes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought we were going to survive way longer there. What's my best? 21.27? God damn, I was a monster earlier. Um, see, I don't like that one. That that obstacle seems way harder to me. But, uh, yeah, so now I, I should mention I'm playing this on, on Steam. The Steam version is coming out at some point this week. It might be, uh, it, I, I'm not totally sure because the... The uh, Thanksgiving sale has kind of thrown everything into uh, disarray. Like, I, I can't even check the price of this game coming out for Steam right now, at least on the coming soon section, because uh, everything is just dominated by the Thanksgiving sale right now. And this is the, like, this is not totally related, but this is the first sale, I think, in my history with Steam. That was awful right there. The first sale in my history with Steam where I haven't actually purchased anything. Not that there haven't been great deals, just like, I think my, the fact that I've been doing this YouTube thing for so long has finally caught up with me, where every day I was just like, I own all those games. I, I, I got promo copies of some of those. That's not fair. I want to get in on the savings. But anyway, at least I still have new games like Super Hexagon to keep me busy. See, I, now this is now available on Steam uh, at some point pretty soon after the recording of this video. I have, to be honest with you, we set a new record there? Yes, we did. Barely, but we set a new record. Let's exit here. Uh, I have no idea how much this is going to cost. I'm going to guess that it's going to be uh, 5 or $10, but, you know, I could be... T oh, Jesus Christ. I could be totally off base there. You know, Terry Cavanaugh did release... V, 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 v originally at like 25 bucks, I think, so there's always the chance that maybe this is going to come off uh, a little bit more expensive than that. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll be a buck. I have no idea. All I do know is that this is one of the most... <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say, because people mis will misinterpret it, but I say it's one of the most interesting puzzle games that I've played recently. People are going to be like, well, it's not interesting. You just spin around a hexagon. You got to kind of play it to experience it, I feel. And, and I know some people are going to look at this and say, like, this looks like a free Flash game. You are, you know, not necessarily wrong. There's a lot of free Flash games that could possibly warrant purchases, and I think this is one of them. Uh, this game is fucking insane, and will burrow its way into your brain. It's impossible almost to describe what makes this game so re so replayable and, and addictive, but uh, certainly, you know, like, as soon as I, I booted up the game, we, like, came back from dinner one night, uh, my girlfriend and I, and I was like, you know, I just want to, I know you got to do some homework, I'm going to check out this uh, Super Hexagon game for a little bit, just so I can make a video of it next week. 
I played it for like 20 minutes and then laid down and sh then she was like, I just want to play a couple games of this and she played it for like a half hour. Uh, and then, you know, before she finally managed to wrench it from her own hands. This is the kind of game where you'll boot it up for 10 seconds and then be like, you know what, I'm gonna spend the next like four hours of my life doing this. Obviously, this, I feel like this video, sh this is uh, the hardest level uh, that I've unlocked so far, obviously. Uh, I feel like this video should some come with some sort of epilepsy warning. Because obviously, uh, it, it's disorienting to play, but I think it's even more disorienting if you don't have, if you're watching, like you don't have something to take your mind off, constantly moving left and right here. God damn, that was a second and 54 milliseconds. I want to be able to get to 10 seconds on this level. It might take me a little while. That was much better. We made it to, oh, we made it to point, six seconds. I, I really thought I was getting close to 10. That's the thing. Like, you'll be playing this game, and you'll be like, that was a good, oh, that was awful. You'll be like, that was a good run, like, I did really well there. And then you're like, well, two and a half seconds, are you kidding me? I have no concept of the real weight and feel of time. Or the passage of time, I should say. I don't know, I, I can't even focus on what I'm doing anymore. Let's keep this up, oh my god. I, I'm not really sure how this worked on mobile devices, if, if you gave it like a tap on one side of the screen or if you actually had to like rotate it. If you had to rotate it, I think this game would be borderline fucking impossible. But I remember, I, like I've been following following Terry on, on Twitter for a long time now, ever since I did that uh, VVVVVV Let's Play back in the day. That's a new record by like .01 seconds. Uh, and I've been noticing him tweet about Super Hexagon, so I've been interested in it, in a while, in it for a while, but I remember him saying uh, in one of his tweets, he's like, The Super Hexagon ending is pretty crazy. Too bad only 0.1% of lifetime players have ever seen it. I'm not sure I'm ever going to get there either. Uh, there is apparently a hyper mode that you can unlock in the game. Although, again, God only knows if I will ever reach the skill necessary. You know what? Hexagonist is uh, a little outside of my wheelhouse right now. Let's go back here to, to Hexagon. Where things are much slower. And it, it's like one of those... It's almost like when you play like Rock Band on easy and you're like whoa well for, like for the first time and you're like whoa this is super difficult and then you go play on hard and you're like you know what maybe easy's not that difficult after all oh i'm not sure what happened there but i made it out okay this is actually now that i've done that like super hard level this seems like almost like it's in slow-mo so it might actually be possible for me to set up some good runs here and maybe that is the way that the game is meant to go. You, you think this is hard, and then you just get used to... Oh, that was bad. Then you get acclimated to, like, faster and faster levels. And you uh, eventually start to make some good progress. Now, I should mention uh, some other elements of the game so far. I mean, in terms of depth, there's certainly not a lot here. What the heck? Uh, like, it's not like... As far as I know, I don't think there's a multiplayer mode or anything like that. It's basically like, choose your level, motherfucker. And choose your own adventure. Basically, choose your own death. Uh, yeah, there's no like multiplayer mode or anything like that. Uh, so basically, pretty much with this game, what you see is what you get. New record. Ah, uh, well, and then I stopped pretty soon after that. But um, oh, you know what? Maybe that's what it is. Like it starts just by sending you points, and then it sends you lines, and then it sends you triangles, and then it sends you squares. I don't know. That I to be, some of the mechanics of the game are still a little bit of, o opaque to me. But that's fine because the the simple gameplay, or the gameplay is simple enough uh, that it doesn't really matter. Like the scoring system. It's based solely on time, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna continue to try this, because I feel like I'm on the verge of a breakthrough here. Remember, when we started this, my best run was only 13 seconds. And now we are already in, like, the 30 range. And possibly moving further beyond that. So it's a game where, certainly, you know, self-improvement is a big driving force. And it ha- oh, that was bad. And it happens rapidly. Sometimes it can be a little confusing when, like, the stage rotates and you're like, well... I, I can't really parse where my left and right- Oh, that was awful. Where my left and right directions are gonna go. Like, where they're gonna send my triangle, but in any case. Uh, aesthetically, like, I, I dig the graphics and the gra graphics work fine. Uh, something- A problem I have with a lot of games like this is that they make their aesthetic too muddled, and then it becomes impossible to parse, like, the individual elements out of the environment, like obstacles. I, I think I mentioned that in a lot of, like, twin-stick shooter or arena shooter style games. I'm like, why do you make the background so similar to the foreground? It's impossible to tell what's going on. I get that you were going for something artistic. You fucked it up. You actually screwed up the gameplay a little bit in trying to make uh, the, the game look more attractive. Terry Cavanaugh doesn't do any of that shit. He's like, hey, you want, you want to know what your obstacles are? Your obstacles are these fucking shapes. You're this triangle in the middle. Go to town, motherfucker. Uh, and, and I appreciate that because it makes all the elements very easy to figure out. Very easy to figure out where you're supposed to dodge. And, you know, the, the devil's in the details in, in, a, in a game like this. 
It might seem very simple, but it was obviously not oh, very simple to produce, is my guess anyway, as a, a layperson. Let's try this one more time and then maybe I'll stop. Musically, the, I mean, the, the music's fine. You get the same music on, on each individual level, I should say, so every level has its own song, at least so far, uh, from what I remember, at least. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with the other levels, primarily just with Hexagon here. Can't believe I made it out of there, okay. That's good though. We got to the pentagram stage or pentagon stage. Too much Isaac. Not enough geometry class. Okay. Oh that was, I was so close to getting a new record there. I gotta try one more time. Like I said, the one more try factor in this is huge. And this is the kind of game where certainly, even though it doesn't have multiplayer, if you have friends over, prepare to possibly waste a lot of time and I don't know, maybe even lose a friend. If he suffers from epileptic seizures. Uh, we're gonna keep this. Okay, we're out. No! Why did I become a Z Sansari all of a sudden? Um, we're gonna do one more run, and that's it. And I'm gonna shut the fuck up and focus. Although, apparently, speaking has actually helped me out and allowed me. You know, sometimes you get in the, like, a flow state when you speak in these games, and then it becomes much easier. Oh, god damn. Okay, one more time. You know what I mean? Like,. Again, same thing with Rock Band. Sometimes you'll be playing, you'll be focusing really hard, and then you won't actually be able to uh, do what you want to do. And then your friend calls you up, and you're, you're having a conversation on the phone, and you're like, Oh, I just FC Jordan. That's Guitar Hero 2. This is the last try, I swear to God. Well, that's an appropriate way to end it. <laughs> that might have seemed like it was on purpose. I promise you that I uh, it was not. So there are actually ends to these levels. So we, if we complete Hexagon, we unlock this one. Complete Hexagonist, we unlock that last one. And this is, uh, Super Hexagon, man. Start game, options, credits. Old school. We got no other, you know, fluffy modes here just to add needless gameplay here. There's enough gameplay in Super Hexagon that I feel like if you like what you see, you should absolutely purchase it. But be forewarned, uh, know what you're getting yourself into. This is a game that will blow your mind. Like, my brain, now that we've stopped playing, just feels weird. Like, I just see flashing colors and triangles everywhere. But in any case, uh, I think this is a good puzzle game. It's definitely my kind of puzzle game. It's not like slow and methodical. It's not even really a puzzle game. I don't need. I, don't, I just don't know how to describe it. Basically, uh, it's much more of like a fast-paced. You know, you could do a hundred runs an hour easily uh, if you sat down and actually played it. Probably more like five hundred runs an hour. But in any case, again, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. If you're interested in Super Hexagon, go check it out on Steam. I'm Northern Lion. Thanks for watching.